Craig, so nice to connect with you and welcome to the Light Path Podcast. Grateful to be here, Kirsten. This is awesome. <laughs> so before we jumped on, Craig and I were kind of chuckling a little bit because we're talking about that whole concept of these spiritual terms and what they actually mean. And I love it that we've connected because we, uh, I think we're on the same page as that, is there's lots of this jargon out there, but what on earth does it actually mean? Absolutely. Oh, we're going to dig in. Let's deconstruct it all. Uh, if there's, <laughs> if there's really anything that I really pride myself on, it's taking some of these more complex and esoteric concepts and, and digging into the science, like real science, not like the science that everybody's been talking about for the last five years, like actually understanding how things work and how they're relative to us as humans on this planet earth. Love that. And I think because we can, we can so zoom out to kind of get this overarching picture, but we forget that a lot of what spiritual and inverted commas people talk about is science-based and that's what gives it grounding. And that's why practices such as the one that we're going to be talking about today, mindfulness, has not just existed for centuries, but it's been an integral part of many ancient civilizations and communities for centuries for good reason. Absolutely. For centuries. And and here we are in, in 2024. And, and it's like, what's the practical application? Like, how does it help the person that's listening right now? And, and why? Why is it so important? And, and I'm happy to dig into even my own story, because if we were having this conversation eight years ago, and you were like, she go sit over there and sit there and be quiet for a little while, I would have laughed at you. Yeah. And laughed at you. And and now I can tell you why it's really important and why I have an entire company built around teaching people how to do it, making it fun and entertaining and, and easy. Uh and and why our clients and customers are are loving what we're doing so much. So I'm excited to well, do that. Well, let's dive in. For some reason I've lost your video, by the way. I can see you. You can and see I me. still see me. Okay, sweet. Oh, I think over. No, no, I think because the other one might have been there. Okay, we'll just keep going. Um, cool. I hate it when I do shit like that because then it takes so long to go back and edit. <laughs> anyway, I'm like, oh, my God, you, like, d disappeared from that square. Play it. You can just play it through with all the imperfections, too. That works also. People don't care. Um, <laughs> well, let's dive into your story. Like, who are you? How did you even come to this conversation? So look, as without diving into like all of the details, I mean, long story long, I'm I'm a, I'm a stressed out New Yorker that um, mm -hmm. was really had absolutely no idea how much self medicating I was doing through drugs mm -hmm. and alcohol, uh, only to realize that it was the stress and anxiety that I was really putting on myself, uh, and and obviously this beautiful society that we've co created. Um, I mean, let's face it, just being a law abiding citizen here in the United States is a full-time job. Going to the DMV, getting the mail every day, like putting the garbage cans out, getting them back, like opening up packages. Like mm. there's just more things to do in the day than I have time to do it, which means I have a never ending honey-do list and a never ending list of things to do for myself, my wife, my daughter, my family. Like my daughter comes home, she's four years old. She comes home with homework. Yeah. She's four. Yeah. She can't do it. So it's an hour of work for me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just really weird, this culture that we've co-created. And um, and it's kind of built with this low-level anxiety. And I didn't realize quite what it felt like to relax until I found sound therapy and until I found frequency therapy and until I found um, kind of what we're doing now. And now I started having this conversation far and wide because sound and vibration is so powerful on the human body. And, and it really does help you to truly relax. And, and that's what I think people need to feel. I think we have problems relaxing, particularly here in the United States. And, uh, and even as I say the word relaxing, kind of, I'm sure there's a bunch of people that are like smiling and chuckling as they're listening to this podcast on the go and, and while they're doing three other things and they're like, yeah, relax. That's, that's funny. <laughs> Yeah, because when you think about relaxing, it's something that you either earn. So I work really hard and then I'll relax, whether it be at the end of the day or at the end of like the quarter when I might go on a two-day break. Um, it is something that you, it just takes up time, like you said, and we're so scheduled. Um, but I'd be interested to see hear your perspective on this, 
on how maybe that whole process of COVID may have living through that has maybe opened up or cracked open the need for relaxation and space and aloneness that that could have been a secret gift. I visited New York a couple of years after the COVID thing and I couldn't get over how much it had changed and how vacant people were. Um, and it, and it was really sad. It was missing that, um, that new, the classic New York energy. But I think what I saw is exactly what you described. People are like low level anxiety is just normal. Now it's a normal state of being. And we fill our time ticking boxes, going to work and the medicating. I mean, obviously here in Australia, pot's not legal. So the medicating that I saw just out in the open with these drugs was just, it was mind blowing. But, you know, have you noticed a shift in people's focus around turning towards more holistic or mindful practices since the intensity of COVID over there? Absolutely. So, so look, we do sound and vibration therapy. That's what in harmony is all about. We're about bringing you into harmony with your surroundings. And our business has been growing exponentially. We make what we call relaxation furniture, which we'll get into the details of all that. And then we have a record label and that record label has our own app. We call them music meditations. And it's all about sound and frequency to guide the, guide the mind, body, and spirit into those deeper meditative states, alpha and theta brainwave state. We could talk about all of that. Um, we have been doing this for eight years. November will be eight years. We're recording this in, in May, right? So we're seven and a half years into it, let's call it. And the first three, four years that we were doing this, 2016 to 2020, it was really through events and going to events, trade shows, conferences, festivals, retreats, you name it. Anywhere we can bring our tech, we did. And putting people on the technology and showing them what we do. Well, COVID pushed us online and uh, as it did with everybody, right? The events mm-hmm. stopped and we needed to go online. So we, we doubled down hard on creating content, educational content. So if you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, you know, uh, X, wh- whatever, wherever, you're going to see a ton of informational content from us. And what that has yielded us, what that has brought is, is that a lot of people are sharing the, the videos that we're putting out. And, and really the interactions have been through the roof and I'm super grateful for that. But ultimately all of that means is more and more people are looking for solutions like us. And it's not just vibrational therapy and vibroacoustic therapy. It's red light therapy. It's cold therapy. Mm-hmm. It's, it's sauna and hot therapy. It's more people talking about grounding and getting outside and getting sunlight on their skin. Like There are so many different aspects to living a healthy life. It's not just about vibroacoustic therapy and mindfulness and meditation, but and we can dive deep on that. It's also about understanding what the body truly needs to thrive. And that includes sunlight, includes clean water, which is hard to find these days anywhere on the planet. It includes food from the earth that hasn't been with pesticides, herbicides, and, and that sort of thing, and hasn't been tempered with as far as genetically mod- genetic modification, which is horrific for the body, uh, and and getting access to um, skin-on-skin contact, which mm-hmm. is something that's really important for us humans. We are social creatures. And yes, mindfulness and meditation is about going inward. However, part of our survival is really predicated on connection to others and skin-on-skin contact, which releases oxytocin, which is really important, right? So there's there's a lot of different aspects to overall health and wellness. A lot of people are looking for solutions to optimize their performance. And, and that has been a field that is growing by leaps and bounds every single day. More and more people, I think if COVID did anything, it was shine a light on just how misguided, especially down in Australia, how misguided some of the otherwise respected sources of information can actually be. And I think a lot of people have woken up to where they're getting their information. Again, believe whatever you want to believe. One thing Mm -hmm. that we have absolutely seen is that um, a lot of the mainstream media sites got it wrong. Uh, Some of them got it right. Many of them got it right. Many of them got it wrong. And I think a lot of people woke up and started looking for answers to their questions, especially from a health perspective, from different people. And and more importantly, I think a lot of them started to seek out 
their own solutions. And that's where we come in, right? Sound and vibration has been around for centuries, millennia. We have been singing and dancing and, and, and connecting with our tribes. And Australia has some of the oldest vibratory instruments on the planet. The didgeridoo. The, the oldest. Right, is, yeah. is the oldest vibratory. Well, <laughs> this is actually the oldest. Well, right? sorry. Yes, you are right. The voice. So the larynx and the voice box for those that aren't watching. But um, it is. The didgeridoo mm -hmm. is the oldest. And and I, I'm pretty good at the did circular breathing. Oh, wow. Difficult. It's it's hard um, to play the didgeridoo. Well done. Unbelievably difficult. Um, I did take a lesson and, uh, and I do own a didge. It's very difficult. My wife laughs at me every time I try and play <laughs> it. Um, but nonetheless, I have some friends that are absolutely incredible at it. And, um, and it's spectacular. Now, these are the acoustic instruments that create vibration. And they have been used from, you go to Nepal, bells, chimes, the gong, one of the most complex frequencies on the planet. Um, these are all great. In Harmony is basically focused on taking these ancient um, technologies, if you will, and really mixing that with modern manufacturing processes and, and a digital world. So think of our furniture as a digital delivery system for sound and frequency to every cell in your body just as a didgeridoo projected on you when you're standing at the bottom of that beautiful instrument, you can mm -hmm. feel every cell in your body vibrating. It's, it's a very similar experience on, on our technology or listening to our music meditations. All right, let's dive into science behind it all because sure. ancient practices, like they weren't sitting there in lab studying it um, yeah. under the beautiful- They just did what space. felt good. But yeah, exactly. It was so instinctual. Like, Ooh, was so beautiful. I like that. If you have never sat at the base of a didgeridoo, oh my gosh, it is one of the most profound experiences. But all right, let's dive in. First of all, let's just crack the code. I want to go into vibrational healing, but let's go into really understanding scientifically what mindfulness actually is. Like what is the science behind it? Cool. So um, let's talk about the brain. Um, and, and let's, let's again, just break this down. So that's really easy to understand. Okay. Um, your brain, we can, we can put an EEG an echoencephalograph on, on your head. It's kind of like a swim cap with 19 points on it. Those points measure electrical signals and how fast they are firing the frequency at which those synapses are firing. And that's how fast your brain is thinking different parts of your brain do different things. You've heard the expression, we use 10% of our brains. Mm -hmm. um, that's not true. We use our mm -hmm. entire brain. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a couple different ways that that 10% kind of originated. First is with um, um, parts of the brain that are just dark matter. And then the way that I, I really always interpreted it is that, look, motor skills is one part of your brain. Language is another part of your brain, right? Like different parts of your brain, short-term memory, long-term memory, there's different aspects of our brain that do different things. So at any one time, we're not really activating our entire brain. We're activating a part of our brain while we're walking or walking and talking or right. Like then all of a sudden you start to music in a very beautiful way, activates and harmonizes the brain. And when you look at it with this EEG on, we can actually quantify how fast these synapses are firing. And that's where we get into different brainwave states, a specific state, okay? So just to define them, when your eyes are open and you're processing the world around you, both of us right now, we're looking into the camera, we're looking at the screen, not only that, but my peripheral is looking out the window and right, like when your eyes are open and you're processing the world around you, the brain is processing something like 4 billion with a B inputs per second. Your conscious mind can handle four bits of information per second. Okay. So eyes open is a beta brainwave and it's the most active. Mm -hmm. Your eyes are open. You're processing the world around you. It's measured between 12 to 14 Hertz, which is a waveform. Hertz is just a, a number of vibrations per second or a number of oscillations per second, 12 to 14 oscillations per second, all the way up to 40 Hertz. Um, that is a beta brainwave. Okay. Below that is alpha measured 12 to 14 Hertz down to eight Hertz. Below that is theta eight Hertz down to about four Hertz below that is Delta four Hertz down to about a half a Hertz above beta 40 Hertz to about a hundred Hertz is gamma. Okay. Five main brainwave states, gamma up top beta. It's actually easier this way. Gamma up top, then <laughs> beta, alpha, theta, and Delta. 
the target brainwave state for meditation, okay? When people say reach that meditative state, that is an alpha or a theta brainwave state. You can drift as deep as delta. You can go up into gamma. However, when they say a meditative state, it's basically anything but beta. Getting out of beta and into alpha, down into theta. Beta is where our eyes are open and we're processing the world around us. Alpha is like a daydreamy state. It's like um, if you get in the car to drive to work and you just kind of snap out of it and you're at work, where have you been? You were in an alpha brainwave state. You were still processing the world around you. You were still seeing what's going on, but it was so routine, right? You ever close your eyes and you have a little daydream and then you snap right back out of it. You come back, your brain drifted down into an alpha brainwave state. Creativity begins in an alpha brainwave state. Rejuvenation, restoration begins in an alpha brainwave state. Below that is theta. Theta is where we are during rapid eye movement sleep. It is a very deep state of mindfulness and meditation. That is where um, restoration really lives. When you're in a theta brainwave, that's where we are during rapid eye movement sleep. Sleep is another conversation we could dive into if you'd like, but um, uh, that's where it's, it's really restorative, rejuvenative. It's where we kind of clean out our desk and set things up. Delta below that is where cellular rejuvenation happens, okay? And then gamma, gamma is associated with higher thoughts of consciousness. Um, and um, uh, yeah, interconnectedness is often to, to be played with in, in gamma or gamma brainwave state. We need to move in and out of all of these different brainwave states over the course of the day, um, during sleep cycles and during rest, cycles of rest. And, um, and what I find in studying the brain uh, using HRV in particular, is that um, most people that I test that aren't working actively working on their brain, meditation, mindfulness, using vibroacoustic therapy or, or certain light technologies uh, are stuck in a perpetual delta brainwave state. Eyes open in delta. And the, the troubling part with this is the importance of sleep. And it was one of the things that I didn't mention when I talked about all the great things that we need to do from a health and wellness perspective. Sleep is actually at the top of that list. Last night I was in bed at 8.30 with my daughter. I woke up at 4 a.m. Like like eyes open, ready, charged and ready to go. And I sat down at my desk and I started working. I've been at this desk since 4 a.m. Well, pushing almost 12 hours. <laughs> and, and I'm just driven and I'm going, I'm going, I'm going because I got a lot of great things going on right now. Um, so when we talk about mindfulness, we're talking about that alpha and theta brainwave state as far as a target brainwave state. And, and it can be a challenge. It can be a challenge for us to get out of beta, to get away from the to-do list, to get away from all of the things that are captivating our attention day in and day out and slow down. Breath is a great way to do that. Vibroacoustic therapy is a great way to do that. Light therapies are a great way to do that. As you can see, this red light that's on my head. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of different things that we can do to help us to get into those slower brainwave states. And so when we do that, when we are, you know, provide ourselves the support we need to allow our brains just to, to slow down. And I believe feel safe and even productive in those, you know, states, I'm going to get into more of that in a minute, but what do you find there? Like what are people really searching for? Because I think if you said to somebody mindfulness, I think that the immediate connotation is a break from the monkey mind, is a break from the routine, is a break from the to-do list. But that's not what it is. Nope, it's not. Um, so the brain has to spend time in these other brainwave states to do the things it needs to maintain itself. Let's talk about another really important system in the body, and that is the nervous system. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about stress and anxiety because it all plays a part. If you're constantly thinking about all the things you need to do or all the things you're not doing or all the things you're not going to get to do or all of the trials and tribulations that are so easily thought about in this life, um, you're probably in a sympathetic nervous system response. That is associated with fight or flight, stress and anxiety. Um, the body only has one response to stress. Whether that stress is physical stress, emotional, mental, relational, you know, I can't believe my father is doing that thing again, relational stress, right? Or, oh, I can't stand this person that just, that I just am attached to right now, whatever. Um, 
financial I find stress. that people get really stressed about the relationships that they don't have as well. Like, you know, when am I going to get this baby? When am I going to meet that person? It's definitely something I hear over and over again. Oh, absolutely. It causes people so much, so much. Yeah, or you're dating and it's like, when are you getting married? And then once you, when are you getting engaged? And then once you get engaged, it's like, when are you having the baby? And then once you have, you have the baby, it's mm. like, when are you having your next baby? And right, like, again, I call those societal stressors. So the body only has one response to stress. And that is the sympathetic nervous system response spike in cortisol, spike in adrenaline. And, and when we get that spike in cortisol and adrenaline, there's this domino effect in the body where the body goes, I'm in survival mode. And if I'm in survival mode, I don't need to digest my food. I don't need my immune system. I don't need rational thinking. I don't need my reproductive organs. I, it shuts down all of these daily maintenance tasks to save the vessel as a whole. And, and that's great for a short stint on a Tuesday afternoon when you're in trouble and you need to get out of it. It's not okay from the moment you wake until the moment you lie down day after day, week after week, month after month. And so many people are stuck in that rut of stress and anxiety, digging themselves out of their current situation. And, and it's valid, I'm not saying it's not valid, right? Like there's a time to hustle. There's a time to focus. There's a time to double down to your point before, when we're in those moments, we have to give the body a break. We have to give the body an opportunity to rest. And eight hours of sleep is great. Even me just saying eight hours of sleep to some people, they're like, <laughs> okay, cool. Four hours is what I get. So be it. Over the course of the day, give yourself 15 or 20 minutes with your eyes closed and an opportunity to rest. Call it a cat nap, call it a power nap, call it meditation, call it whatever you want but you have to give the body the time it needs to rejuvenate itself. And if you're only getting four hours of sleep, that might mean every two hours, you need to take 10, 15 minutes, get your feet on the earth or in grass or on the sand, not on concrete or a, you know, a petroleum based substance and, and ground, get some sunshine on your skin and give yourself an opportunity to power up. You might need to do that more often than, than me who got eight hours of sleep last night, which by the way, I don't often get eight hours of sleep. I have a four year old, I really don't remember the last time I got eight hours of sleep. And I was so grateful <laughs> when I, my eyes woke up at four and I was like, my daughter's not here. And she didn't wake me up in the middle of the night because I'm the middle of the night guy. And and she didn't wake me up. And that was like three nights in a row where that didn't happen. And I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> so again, just I'm just grateful for the sleep that I can get. Um, and, but you need to give your body time to rest. And that's where mindfulness and meditation comes in. Um, that's in, in a not so perfect world. In a perfect world, you have CEOs, uh, some of the most powerful companies on the planet, you read their biographies and they don't miss their morning meditation. Mm -hmm. They will sleep, they will wake up, journal, work out, meditate. And there is, there's a reason why they'll all take 20 minutes to turn off the outside world and go within, drift into that alpha brainwave state because that's where creativity really begins. So again, I think people, especially in the spiritual community, like to overcomplicate exactly what meditation actually is. And I'll give you a very easy definition because it's something that resonates really well with me. Meditation is not about quieting the mind. Meditation is about finding quiet in the noise. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the world around us, the to-do list, the, the thoughts, the brain doesn't know how to do anything else except think so that's all it knows how to do. So that's all it does. Thoughts are constantly something like 60,000 thoughts per day, 90% of which repeat from the day before 90% of which are negative. So I think of meditation and mindfulness, even if you're just sitting down and thinking of the things you're grateful for, for 10 minutes thinking about the things that inspire you, visualizing these positive outcomes and these positive futures as if they are now. Like there are some very simple exercises that you can go through that will help you to reframe what's actually happening and focus on a brighter future. So if you are in those dire straits and you are in those most difficult moments, you can take some time to reframe what the future looks like. Meditation doesn't have to be about sitting down and being quiet and not thinking about anything. Yeah. It can be very productive time. I'm I'm kind of smirking as you're saying this because you don't know this. Uh, some of the listeners will, but 
in our in my ritual store, so the ritualemporium.com, the first digital product I launched were morning meditations. It's just a series of five 10-minute morning meditations doing exactly that. One's for gratitude, one's for visualizations, all of those things because that's exactly what I do as part of that morning routine. It's so funny that you say, you know, CEOs, they get up, they work out, they sit before they even attempt to start their day. And it was a practice that I adopted um, in my teaching days when I knew for the next 12 hours I'm giving of myself to the five-year-olds, to their parents, to my staff. Like it's give, 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 give. So I adopted that routine just out of pure survival and what I was thinking is a little bit of selfishness. At least I start the day giving to myself first. And so this is why like I just, I think I what I want you to hear is that there is a reason behind what good quality and research practitioners do. Um, oh. And I don't think I talk about it enough. So thank you for highlighting that. No, you're welcome. First of all, blessings and love to you. I am so grateful for my daughter's teachers. And every time I go in and pick her up, she's in Montessori school and, and I love it. And every time I go in there and there's like, I don't know, 15 or 20 kids running around. These two are tackling each other over there. These two are getting into no good. This one's climbing on a bookshelf and is way too high off the ground. Like I'm always like, Bless your beautiful hearts. I am oh, so great. Do you know what? It's so funny because 20 years in kindergarten classrooms, nothing is easier than five-year-olds. To me, it's the adults that are the problems. I yeah, like, look, I get that too. I can, I can wrangle. You know, I can walk into a room and have like my whole infants department so like, you know, 200 kids like be quiet. <laughs> but can I speak to an adult and get them to listen? No. <laughs> So well, they're easy. Look, so I'll I'll tell you a great a great analogy which I had and and you brought it up already. So I'm just kind of echoing what you've already shared. But as you get ready to serve all day mm. and to serve these five year olds, their parents, the families, and everybody else, we have to serve from the saucer. So yeah. you're familiar with the teacup? You guys have mm. tea down under for sure. Absolutely. And that teacup comes with a saucer. And you've heard the term, we like your cup has to be overflowing before you can, right? It's the overflow that we serve others. So as that cup overflows, it falls on the saucer. And as the saucer fills up, we serve other people from the saucer. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a really great example of as you're getting ready to go into that environment and serve for 12 hours, now you have an opportunity to take care of yourself, to fill your cup first, and then you can go. And look, being a CEO, being a leader, of of any type of business initiative yeah. or movement you are serving others all day long and and today's oh, yeah. for, for me and i'm sure it is for you as well and that hasn't i mean you know obviously it, it's been a few years now five years now since i have been in that physical position but what hasn't changed is that routine and is that need to see where i'm at first and and what is i guess interesting personally to me now is actually the autonomy and the responsibility I have to myself to do that because being a CEO of my own companies, it, there's no one there expecting me to walk in the door at 8.30 to like be in charge. Um, I have to set my own timetables. I have to set my own expectations. And so now more than ever, the routine is even more important. It's not out of, ne it's out of necessity, but it's not out of a regimented necessity. Mm -hmm. And I think that people, when they say to me, Oh, but I can't find the time for that. It's all about that grounded priority and dedication to self. Like, what do you say to when people will say like, oh, but I can't find the time for all of this? Look, we, we all get the same 86,400 seconds a day. <laughs> I love it that you know how many seconds there are in a day. <laughs> 86,400. <laughs> so look, whether you're the most powerful CEO on the planet, the president of the United States, doesn't matter. You get 86,400 mm. seconds per day and you can do with it whatever you want. Mm. I heard a really great analogy just a couple days ago. And that was um, the average snooze button on a, on an alarm clock is eight minutes. And, and Jeff, who I very much look up to is basically like, do you ever like hit the snooze button? And then like, when the, when it goes off the next time you're like, Oh, now I feel well rested. Now I'm ready to go. No, never. Right. Yeah. It, eight minutes is nice, but like you're barely drifting back into a dream before it goes off again. So if you do something four minutes a day, 365 days the year, that's a 24 hour period. Mm. Okay. So 
eight minutes, just one snooze per day is 48 hours per year of wasted time because you're not really getting any extra sleep and you're not really. So I think as we start to think about whether it's an eight minute meditation that you're going to do, or even four minute meditation you're going to do, mm -hmm. or, or a round of sun salutations you're going to do, or dragging yourself out to stand in the sun, which, which I do right outside this window, take my shirt off and just stare at the sun for three minutes. I live in Vegas. It gets very hot here. Uh, there's really not too much time left that I have over the course of the summer to go mm -hmm. outside in the middle of the day. We just don't do it. But I like to go out in the morning and the evenings and, and grab that sunshine. So what I say to somebody who, who doesn't have the time is find the way to make yourself do it. Give yourself 21 mm -hmm. days. is what it takes to make a habit. Um, but um, start small. Be kind to yourself. You said this and, and we kind of joked about it beforehand. Like, remember that you're loved and, and yeah. that's blah, blah, yeah. blah. Right. But here's yeah. the reality. Um, I think a lot of us are too hard on ourselves throughout the day. I think a lot of us beat each other up, beat ourselves up more importantly mm -hmm. on what we can or can't do. And, and more importantly, how we execute on the things we want to do. Um, and don't be so hard on yourself. Start where you can start. If it's a minute, take a minute. If it's two minutes, take two minutes. Here's the thing. When you start taking care of yourself and you start prioritizing you over the other things that you need to do, it's not selfish because you're going to be stronger and more powerful for it. And once you start to feel what it feels like to have an endless reserve of energy, to have mental clarity, to be able to reach in and grab words from the lexicon that you have available to yourself like that. And as you start to grab this mental agility that you once had, that you can't believe you don't have any more, or you're disappointed in yourself, or you're beating yourself up that you don't have, there are some very simple processes and practices that you can go through. Gratitude, visualization. I mean, there are many different ones um, that very quickly can give you that edge back. And when you get out of that sympathetic nervous system response, when you get out of fight or flight, it is absolutely remarkable how calm and focused, strong and powerful you feel when, when you actually feel relaxed and the breath controls the mind, the mind controls the body. So even just taking some deep breaths in the sun outside for a minute, can help to reset that sympathetic nervous system response to parasympathetic, that that stress response to cool, calm, and collected. And when you're in that cool, calm, and collected space, it is absolutely remarkable how powerful you are. Oh, and yeah. How much you can get done. For sure. And I, I, I want to circle back to the definition of meditation, which I think is, is, again, like you say, just a portal to the experience of mindfulness. Um, I've always defined meditation as the the opportunity to have a deep connection and relationship to yourself um, yeah. and just that space, however you do it, chanting, lying on the ground, guided meditation, or as we'll now go into the whole concept of sound and vibration and how that can really just allow you to hang out with you. And that's really all it is because like you said, just to re reiterate that, when you, when you get to know you, when you get to know, oh gosh, I'm really stressing about that. Oh gosh, I'm really projecting. Oh gosh, I'm really ruminating. When you get to know you, you are so much more powerful and so much more autonomous in the way in which you choose to walk through your day. And all these practices yeah. just give you the opportunity to explore that. So talk to us about the science around, we've touched on it, but really let's go into it, that sound and vibration and how that can really, I think, just power up <laughs> that connection. Yeah, with so, so look, um, sound and vibration is so powerful. Okay, so uh, the human body, we are basically a big antenna. Um, we are constantly picking up and giving off frequencies. And many of us don't realize what frequencies are around us and what we're picking up on every single day. Um, just Google dirty electricity and, and you'll start to realize in your home 
quite how much frequency your body's being presented with that you have no idea. Um, and you can look up pulse electromagnetic field therapy. You can look up sound and vibration therapy. You can look up red light therapy, blue light therapy um, from the sun. I mean, we are constantly picking up and giving off frequencies. We are constantly coming into and out of what's called harmonic resonance, which is simply, which simply put is we match the frequencies that we are presented with. And, and you know this from walking into different rooms, whether they're corporate rooms, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's uh, a nightclub or a concert, you walk into a concert by one artist versus a concert by another artist in a different genre. And, and you get a very different feel of a very different audience that is all in that one vibrate, that single vibration. So, you know, when you walked into a room and everybody's quiet and you you just know in your gut, like, what did I? what did I just walk into? Like, right. Like, yeah, who, something's up here. Who died? Yeah. Or what, what just happened? You know what I mean? Something I said, something I did. <laughs> right. Like we know when we walk into those rooms and those environments. So the body is constantly picking up uh, and coming into and out of what's called harmonic resonance with the frequencies we're presented with. Um, if you're consciously presenting your body with frequencies, great. If you're not, then your body is constantly coming into and out of frequencies that are not in your control. And that's most people um, here in the United States, electricity, which is humming all through this incredible home that I have here hums at about 60 Hertz. Um, when I'm sitting in my kitchen and I'm listening to the compressor of my refrigerator kick on and off, that is typically a 60 Hertz hum. Um, you hear it when it first comes on and the brain kind of filters it out mm. through the reticular activator system. And you no longer hear it because it's no longer important. Your ears are still hearing it. The process, the brain is still processing it, but the reticular activator system basically says, hey, that noise isn't important until it is. Um, but your body is still picking up on those frequencies and coming into harmonic resonance with those frequencies. Um, it's very, very important for us to keep presenting the body with, with grounding sounds and frequencies. And the goal is about 10 Hertz. Um, without diving into too much of the details, the resonant frequency for the brain, there's harmonic resonance and there's a resonant frequency. The resonant frequency is the resting frequency. And just going back to seventh grade science, okay? Protons, neutrons, and electrons, um, the periodic table. We don't have to get into like all of that, but you had the outer electron, right? right well, the outer electron ring, it's eight electrons, right? Something with four electrons, something with four electrons and those bond, okay? On an atomic level, every single thing that you're looking at right now, whatever that is, wherever you are, it's vibrating. Mm -hmm. The desk that's sitting in front of me, this amazing microphone, it's vibrating. And it's hard for us to, because it looks and appears solid in, in this three, third dimension, but the reality is on an atomic level, everything is vibrating. So that, by the way, that includes every cell in your body. Yep. Every cell in your body is moving. You look at it underneath the microscope. If you, have, you haven't looked at your blood underneath the microscope, I highly recommend you do live blood analysis. It's awesome. And you can actually see that blood moving for six minutes after it gets out of your body. It will continue to squirm and move around in search for oxygen, vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. Really wild. Okay. So everything, every single aspect around us is vibrating. And it's all vibrating at a particular harmonic resonance. So these instruments, they help to bring us into balance with the world around us. So um, the resonant frequency for the brain is about 10 hertz. The resonant frequency for the body, depending on the study you look at, Harvard versus uh, a couple other universities, uh, it's somewhere between 5 hertz and 16 hertz. It averages about 10 hertz. When you go out into nature, large bodies of water, the ocean, lakes, streams, forests, the reason we love getting out into nature in addition to the negative ions and, and getting out into nature, it's that it earth vibrates at a, about a 10 Hertz frequency. Uh, the Schumann resonance is 7.83 Hertz and it spikes as high as 30 or 40 Hertz, but it spends most of its time around 10 Hertz. So um, without getting into the details of where all of that comes from, because I can footnote and cite all of it, the resonant frequency of the human body is basically 10 Hertz, which is an alpha brainwave state. So we have to get out of the to-do list, go within, slow down the mind, get into that alpha brainwave state to bring the brain, the body, and our environment into 
harmony. And so how, what are these really practical day-to-day things that we can help or use to do that? So the most important thing is, is to be kind to yourself and to not be overly stressed. Recognize when you're pushing yourself too hard. Recognize when you're giving yourself too much flack, too much to do. And, and recognize that first with the breath. For me, it, it all starts with the breath. That shortness of breath, that, that shallow breathing is the first indicator that I need to take a deep breath, four in, hold for four, out four, hold for four. Simple box breath um, is typically all it takes. You do that for one minute and you're going to help kick in a, sympath- a parasympathetic nervous system response. So just four count in. Hold for four, exhale for four, hold for four, in for four, hold for four, out for four, hold for four. You do that for a minute Mm -hmm. and you're going to institute that parasympathetic nervous system response. Even in my voice and how I'm talking, I can already hear it slow. And that's just, it's just what happens as a natural byproduct of that. So just taking a few deep breaths. Um, I highly recommend using our music meditations. They're free. They're on YouTube. We have uh, 11 hour music meditations. I don't have to go very far to show this to you. And for those of you that are watching online, this is the iPad that sits at my desk and, and you can see I'm literally streaming it all day long. Um, that's an 11 hour music meditation. Uh, this one is focused on, um, the sacral chakra and you can see along the left side, there's an entire playlist. It's, uh, 11 hours times seven. Uh, there's like almost 80 hours of frequency therapy that's playing through a, a, a Bluetooth speaker here in my office. So you just have that running all day long all day long. It's just nice. running in the background. So I'm not sitting in a silent room mm. and and I make it louder and lower based on, you know, if I'm on the phone or if I'm watching something, whatever. Um, it's actually streaming through my whole house and every room I go into when I leave my house, it stays on. Mm. And when I come back, I'm not coming into a quiet house. My plants love it. I mm. love it. Family loves it. And, um, and that's just totally free. We make these music med- We call them extended music meditations. There's extended music meditations to help you with sleep, to bring your home in harmony, to bring yourself in harmony, your office in harmony. Um, look, when you walk into a spa, there's like nice, mm-hmm. pleasant music playing in the background, right? And like, I remember the first spa I walked into and I was like, oh, that's that's pretty it awesome. Nice. Like, yeah. <laughs> why, why can't I do this at home? And mm-hmm. the spa music to me was very like, it just kind of made me lazy. You know, like mm-hmm. it was just like, Oh, that's really nice. I just want to like close my eyes and rest and relax. Our music is designed to both stimulate and amplify. Um, It's designed specifically to give you a little boost of energy and to keep you focused. Um, I listen to sacral quite often. I listen to root chakra, which keeps me very grounded. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a lot of podcasts and a lot of speaking. I will do my throat chakra. Um, And when I really want to kind of let go, I'll do third eye and crown and and, and I see a tremendous difference in, in the way that I operate when these different frequencies are being played in the home. Um, so those are some free resources is getting out into the sunshine, getting your feet in the soil, um, breath, and, and now these extended music meditations. And if you want to take it a step further, we've got an app and, and we've got more extended music meditations there and, and it's $8 a month and we're constantly adding to the library. Um, And then obviously, if you want to kick it up even further, we've got our our relaxation furniture, our sound lounges, our massage therapy, uh, massage tables, and uh, and of course, our meditation cushion as well, all designed to help calm and relax the nervous system. I love that. So I cannot wait to spend, I mean, we're talking to you at the end of your day, but it's the beginning of mine. I am absolutely going to be immersing myself in your music today as I work and- I cannot wait to really support myself that way. And I think if you've heard anything today, hear that. It's simple. It is necessary because it's what our body 
is naturally going to not only attune with, but also going to co-create with. Mm. Um, All of that and the links to that can be found in the show notes. So I'm going to pop it all there. But if there is one last thing that you want people to know about their own body's innate ability to be vibrating at a frequency where they can access this freedom, this peace, this productivity, this drive, this joy, what would you want them to know? That you control you. Yeah. Yeah, I think far too often we want to assign blame and control to others when the reality is you control you. Um, I think if there's anything that COVID taught us, it was that we need to take care of ourselves and that, yes, we can lean on government and that we should expect them to want our best interests at hand. But um, I think at the end of the day, we need to take responsibility, not be a victim and, and recognize that we control ourselves for 86,400 seconds a day. You get to decide what you do. And and that might mean that you're going to work for somebody else for eight hours and that you're going to earn an income and an hourly wage. And and you can have your own justification of what that means. If you're they're in control, you're you are your own sentient being, and you get to decide and control you. And giving yourself the ability to go within, giving yourself the ability to ask yourself what you want and feel into what you want, visualize and go get what you want, what you desire, what you crave, what you need. It is all within ourselves to go get that. And I know it's a very simplified version, but the reality is, and I tell this to my four-year-old all the time, like you control you, Mm -hmm. the emotions that come over, the feelings that you have, how much you suffer. That is all a choice. And, um, It's not to say that you won't suffer, but you do get to decide how long you suffer. And that is everything is within our own control. We control ourselves. We control us. And we just need to go out and collect and and sharpen the tools that help us to do that day in and day out. Meditation and mindfulness is one of those tools. Craig, thank you for sharing your wisdom with us, your generous free resources with us, um, and also making the resources that, there is an exchange for so accessible. Um, I look forward to using them and connecting with them. And I very much appreciate the time that you offered to us and our community today. Thank you so much for having me. Grateful. and uh, A lot of love and a lot of gratitude for the time and, and for hearing my voice. Thank you. <laughs>